All right, let's talk about Project 4. Project 4 is not as complex. That is, there's not many parts and pieces like Project 3. So, good. <laughs> You'll be getting a break that way. Um, you will be working extensively with color. Um, and it'll be the first project where we're going to look at different designers. You're going to choose one designer after studying or reviewing their work and do this piece in their style. So I'll show you some examples of that. So again, um, the overall goal, objective, is to gain an understanding of how to establish visual hierarchy within large-scale space filled with a variety of elements. That's the challenge of posters. They've got a lot of parts and pieces all competing for attention, so you've got to create a good hierarchy. Now, we've been creating good hierarchy so far using size, but there's other ways to create hierarchy. You can use space, you know, make that one object open. There's nothing else around it, so it stands out. Um, the use of value or weight, so darker, heavier things. Um, and the use of anomaly, or making it strange or regular, will also make something stand out. And as you study the different designers, ask yourself, uh, which approach do they use? They use size, space, weight value, or irregularity. All right. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. So the upcoming event that we're going to talk about is uh, the Haunted Grove put on by Pine Grove Apartments. And it's going to happen on a Tuesday, October 27th. I uh, just know this. All you really have to do is put at least Haunted Grove in lettering that I can read, in lettering that is accurate to actual typeface. The rest you can represent with lines. You might want to put in a subtitle that I could read as well, but the rest could just be lines. Okay. Um, but that's what um, Group B voted on, so we'll just stick with it for Group A, making it the same thing for our um, topic for the event. Okay, but um, again, I want you to think about market. Well, obviously, it's going to be SVSU students, probably ones most likely living on campus. How are you going to appeal to them? Okay. Um, okay, your research due. Um, we've got the concept sheet linked right up here. Let me show you what that looks like. Let's see, concept sheet for project four. I hope that's this. Ta-da! Come on, get with it. All right. Um, yeah, this is the events poster. So 20 words, just different ideas that come to your mind as you consider this event, consider the market. What are the needs of the client? That is Pine Grove. Uh, what's the art? target audience, SUSU students, I would imagine, and then how your design is going to appeal to the audience. And then you're going to make uh, 40 different sketches. And if you keep them small, they'll go pretty fast. Okay. All right. Um, the final work due is one full-color hand-drawn poster. Again, for those of you who wanted to use the computer, you're still going to have to do this part first and then um, turn that in along with the computer-generated image. You can mount the computer-generated image as long as I get the one hand-drawn full-color poster. All right. Um, and this one's a like the others. You're going to mount your piece on the front of the black mat board. You're also going to give me a JPEG or a color copy of your work. You're also going to put a tag on the back, but in addition to that, because you're trying to reference another designer, you're going to list the name of the designer, in this case it was the design studio, and a picture of their work so I can compare it to this to understand how you're making your work look like theirs but not copying theirs. So if you, um, yeah, you don't want to say, okay, I'm, I need to draw a Halloween thing like uh, pumpkins and bats, and then you find an image that that designer that you chose drew of pumpkins and bats and then redraw it. Um, I don't want you to do that. I want you to draw it as if you were that designer working in that his or her style and um, come up with something 
that reflects their style. You know what? I think now's a good time to look at those samples. Let's look at what students have done in the past. I think it'll make more sense. Here I have three different examples. The first example I'm going to show you is student work, and then I'll tell you, show you two samples of the designer's work that comes after that. That is, as soon as my computer <laughs> starts showing something, because it's just simply a black screen at the moment. Come on. Wake up. Oh, <laughs> please. <laughs> oh, no, it doesn't. Now, now I hit escape. That's going to go away. Oh, Johnson. Come on. Yeah, this is almost like being in the classroom when things don't go right with my projector. Okay, I know if I wait long enough, it's going to show up. Oh. Well, I guess now's a good time to say uh, I'm really impressed. We're going to be going on to, what, week eight now? That's going to be awesome. We're making this. We're going to make it happen. Despite all the challenges, we're still getting through this term. That's great. Okay, maybe I will have to split this video into two parts. <laughs> okay, here it is. All right. So, first we see this is done by a student. The student was uh, reflecting the work of Michael Schwab. Let's look at the work of Michael Schwab. Notice that that is our bell tower on campus. Here's Michael Schwab's work. Can you see how these two are similar to this? Uh, Silhouette-like images, flat, strong color, um, all caps. Yeah, it, it's it's there, and is it? It's reflecting that work. It's not copying. If he drew um, a person standing there with a guitar in this pose, then it would be copying for this assignment. Okay. Um, oh, interesting. Uh, it's not showing the image. Uh, oh, oh, I got you. Here is the image of the student work, trying to reflect Lorraine Wild. Let's look at some of her work. That's this. Notice silhouette, flat, and this type of lettering. So the, the student said, well, I like this kind of lettering. I like these silhouette-like images. I'll do this. OK. Now, um, this reflects Asterix Studio, now known as Impossible Creature, out in Seattle. Um, this was also a Halloween event. And they draw images like this. And so the, the student was inspired and said, well, you know, I could do something like that. And they put together this piece. It was nice of um, the studio to actually respond when I sent them all the student samples that year. But uh, I hope that gives you an idea. So you can work in a person's style, but not directly duplicate what they've already done. So I'm putting you in a kind of a weird spot. For the most part, I don't ever want you to duplicate somebody else's work. But in this case, I want you to do so in the name of becoming more familiar with different designers and graphic design history, because it's a valid thing for you to study as a graphic designer. You have to know what's out there and know all the different styles. OK, so I hope that explains that. And let's see if this computer will cooperate and go back to Firefox. OK. I don't know what the other thing was. All right. My screen's still black, but I can see on the second screen that um, it's showing up. So let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. So the video I'm making right now is going to go here. You know what this is, the samples. I've made two other videos. One's going to go here. It's going to be about color. And another one is going to be the reference that I pull from this one. It's also going to be about color. So um, do know we got some required reading, pages 6 and 7, along with 32 and 33. 
and um, you've seen the samples. You can download them here, but those are the ones I just showed you. You know what the concept sheet looks like. You know how many sketches. You know the topic. Um, if you look at the announcement, you can see the specific details. Um, and I might put them on this uh, web page as well. But there you go. That's an introduction to Project 4. Thank you very much.